Welcome to our course, Support Vector Regression. We are making a machine learning project about home appliances energy consumption prediction. Today, we're going to process different features. We're going to index different time elements. We are going to process the data frame based on daytime so that later on in this project, we would be able to do a time series analysis based on these different indexes. So this is going to be a very exciting part of our machine learning project because all the rest of our lessons, especially if we're going to go to making our predictive model, this part of our project can give the primary background or backbone to our time series analysis and our predictive model. So before we continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of free and exciting data science lessons for all of you. We do have machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, the different data science tips, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. And don't forget to hit the notification icon so that you will be notified every time we have a new session. And don't forget to share this video with your friends. So let's get right into our job. So let's remember that in this part of our lesson or our project, we have actually indexed the time. So let me find here so that we can really s properly see what we have done and so that we would be able to understand the process that we're going to do in this lesson. So remember that in this part, when we read our data, we already parsed our dates. And the reason for this is that we would be able to index our date. So also in this part here, df is equal to df that set index date. We have indexed our date. And for that, we said that this part is really very important so that we could make our time analysis. And so this part of our lesson is actually the part of doing our time series analysis. And because when we say time, there are actually a lot of things to consider. Of course, this consideration always depends on the kind of data that we have and the kind of result that we have in our mind. So first, let's examine this feature. So here is our date. And when we say date here, we can actually see the time, not just the month, the day and the year, but of course, the time interval. So as you could see, we have here 40, then we have here 50, then we have here 20. So this part is actually presenting from the highest consumption to the lowest consumption. So for us to clearly see the proper. So let's go to this part so that we can properly see the time interval. And like the first one that we have just had, because we have actually arranged here our appliances from the highest to the lowest. So we could not clearly see the proper time interval. So let's go to this one so we can properly see. Okay, so here we are. Okay, here. By examining the date here, we can clearly see that the time interval is by 10 minutes. So here is 17, then it becomes 1710, then it becomes 1720 then it becomes 1730 and so on and so forth. So with that, what we will do here is we first have to index the time based on four time features. So we have first the month, then we have weekday, then we have the hour, and then we have the week. So what we will do is let's have this one. So we need this to index our time or our date based on these four categories. We have per month, per weekday, per hour, and then per week. So what's the meaning of this one? Why do we have to do this? The importance of doing these different time features is that we would be able to understand clearly the proper trend of usage and that we would be able to also identify which among them, which of these features we're going to use for our predictive modeling later on. So we are set to go and then let's run this. So we can see something like this one and actually I don't like this and it's really very disturbing. So the best way to do that is of course to remove it 
and to remove that what we'll do is we will have this import so every time you will see something like this and you don't want to see it all you have to do is that you're going to remove it using this one so you're going to import warnings and just have to ignore it so let's execute this all right and we're going to run this one again okay so that's it before we're going to go further let's first go back a little while to this part of our project so here in this part we have actually examined the different outliers in our data set and that we have just decided to retain most of these outliers and we would just remove that upper one percent of the values so we have decided that only those values which are above 790 will be removed from our data and the reason for the removal of these different values above 790 is that they show very illogical consumption for home appliances so we said that it's because of the faulty recordings of our devices so now if we are going to actually examine the different values in our data set then we can see that most of the values can be 60 or even below and some of the values can be as high as 790 and there are actually a lot of them so based on this box plot we can see that there are a lot of figures above the maximum and if we are going to consider these raw values for our modeling the tendency is that we would not be able to capture future trends and maybe you would like to ask me why is it impossible for us to be able to capture the future trend the reason for that is our data is not normal and remember here that in our regression algorithm we always have this kind of assumption and this assumption is that we presume that our data is normal and if we're going to use this one without converting the values would make our model very much weak and for us to be able to still retain and observe this assumption very much well what we will do is we're going to do some kind of transformation in our values and for us to do that we are going to use the natural logarithm so using python of course we will have this one so i presume that you guys already know at least in the concept of mathematics what this natural logarithm is because this is actually very much important if you are dealing with values that are not normal and if you don't know yet what this natural logarithm in mathematical concept i would like you to have a review or study the natural logarithm because this really is important not only in support vector regression but also in some other regression models or algorithms so let's execute this one so we can proceed to our next step okay so now what we will do is that we're going to identify the average humidity and the average house temperature so we will have this one so here in our house temperature we are actually just getting the average house temperatures based on the different features which are t1 t2 t3 going to t9 so if you want to know what these ones are then here you can find these different features and also we are getting the average house humidity so of course we are just considering here the house humidity so we are set to go and then let's execute this one all right then if we are very much interested to really see what these values for each average then we will just have this one okay let's copy this copy and then of course we paste that head okay and then let's see this average house temperature now as you could see here the time interval is still 0 0 10 20 30 so it's still 20 uh sorry at uh, 
10 minute interval. So for the first 10 minutes, we have here 18.435. And for the second one, we have 18.439. So here, you can actually see the different average for each time interval. And what about the house humidity? So we can properly see if there could be some kind of consistency vis-a-vis -vis each other. So that, yes. okay. So here, for the first one, it is 46.74 to 5. The second one is 46.672 and so on and so forth. So based on these two, we can say that it's somewhere around 18 and 46. That is for the first few values in our data. But of course, as we go along with the processing of our features, then we will be able to really understand the behavior of each one. And this is going to be very exciting. So in this lesson, we have actually made some of the most important things to consider for understanding and processing our feature engineering part. So here we have dealt with some of our features and here we index our time and indexing here is that we've categorized our time feature into four so we have month weekday hour and week and then also we transformed our data into natural log so natural log because we've seen that there are actually big discrepancy between our smaller and bigger values and then also we take the average of our house temperature and our house humidity do you want to know more about this channel just click these cards we have a lot of free and exciting data science lessons for all of you we do have machine learning essentials deep learning mathematics the different data science algorithms the different data science tips and a lot more here you can always learn and upskill for free